Hi everyone, welcome to Sydney, Australia for Indo-Pacific 2022. Today I'm going to try to cover submarine topics as well as anti-submarine warfare. HII of the US is showcasing this uh, Virginia class uh, submarine scale model. Unfortunately, they won't talk to us anything regarding AUKUS. The UK pavilion is showing a poster with an Astrid class submarine, but they won't talk to us either. So the Royal Australian Navy has this uh, small booth called uh, Nuclear Powered Submarines and uh, their goal is uh, to inform the public uh, about the situation with the program and uh, what they are trying to achieve with uh, nuclear powered submarines. Unfortunately, again, they cannot talk to us on the record. However, uh, they told us, as you may know, that uh, last month in April, uh, the US, UK and Australia signed an agreement to share uh, sensitive information regarding uh, nuclear propulsion for submarines. The one person who was able to give us a statement regarding AUKUS as well as the attack class submarine, the Kensal project uh, with France, was none other than uh, Admiral Noonan, the chief of the Australian Navy. Well, certainly I would not uh, categorise C-1000 as a huge mistake. At the time that the government decided to embark uh, into the, uh, the purchase of the attack class submarines, uh, it was the best uh, conventionally powered submarine available in the world and uh, I was extremely excited by the prospect of, of having that cutting edge technology in our Navy. What we saw uh, between the decision uh, and where we find ourselves today is a change in uh, the ge geographic and strategic circumstances. We've seen changes in technology uh, and we've seen changes in the releaseability of nuclear powered engineering uh, capability uh, from the US and the UK to Australia. These things didn't exist uh, when we first embarked upon the, uh, the attack class submarine. Moving forward from here, uh, the, uh, the negotiations with respect to Naval Group are still ongoing, so I can't give you a cost in terms of what that means, but uh, they are uh, very uh, cordial uh, cord uh, negotiations, and I'm very, very confident that our relationship uh, with the French, particularly the French Navy, and Naval Group moving forward is very, very positive. We still don't know which submarine design the Real Australian Navy is going to select. The Astute class SSN of the UK or the Virginia class of the United States. But the task force is supposed to give their findings in Q1 of next year. We're now in the booth of uh, Australian company ASC, the builder of the in-service Collins class large displacement submarine. It's in service with here in, uh, with the Royal Australian Navy. With me is uh, Peter Tormans, executive manager for the load program. So Peter, good morning. Thanks for uh, welcoming us on your booth. You're welcome, yes. So you recently received a contract award for what is called the life of type extension of the Collins class. Can you please tell us more? Certainly, the, uh, the life of type extension, the purpose of that program is to extend the operational life of the Collins class submarine out into the 2040s. Um, and by making undertaking a range of design changes to the submarine that um, will allow it to operate reliably and provide the same level of availability we're getting out of the submarine now. So uh, what is it, uh, which kind of operations on the submarine do you conduct exactly to, to extend the life of the, the submarine? What do you change? Uh, there's a range of systems we'll be changing to deal with obsolescence issues and ageing issues on the submarine um, to make sure that, yeah, again, it operates reliably out until, uh, out until the 2040s. And how long such an operation takes uh, to conduct? So the work will be done in, a, uh, in a, what's a standard full cycle docking that the submarines undergo. Um, so every 10, year, every 10 years the submarines go into a two year full cycle docking refit and the changes we need to make will be done in one of those uh, cycles, so two years in the shipyard at Osmond where the modifications will be made to the, uh, to the submarine. And all the submarines in the class will go through the lot? Yeah, all six submarines will go through the LOAT program, uh, one after the other, so a total of 12 years to complete all six submarines. All right, cheers, thank you very much. You're welcome.
We are now standing in front of the spare tooth large underwater vehicle with the Commodore of the Royal Australian Navy. Commodore, good morning. Can you please first introduce yourself? Yeah, good morning. Darren Kavner. I am the Director General of Warfare Innovation Navy for the Royal Australian Navy. All right, Commodore. So what is the spare tooth? So the spare tooth is a large, uncrewed underwater vehicle. This is a prototype, it's an eight metre prototype that is part of our robotic and autonomous systems uh, prototyping program as part of the Navy's program to advance our understanding and use of underwater uh, autonomous systems. So it looks a little bit like an underwater glider, however there's a propeller at the, at the stern, so is it a glider or is it a, an unmanned submarine? So you can think of it like an unmanned submarine. It can do a lot of the things that a submarine can do, uh, but it operates autonomously. So it has a number of sensors on it and allows it to uh, actually navigate its way through the oceans underwater. Uh, so it has a degree of stealth like any submarine would have, but a number of sensors as well that are configurable to do different sorts of things. Such as what are some of the mission sets, anti-submarine warfare, seabed mapping, ISR? So the answer is, you know, in these, in these stages with these sorts of prototypes, many of those we're exploring the concepts and how to implement them for future uh, UUV programs. Uh, C2 Robotics have done a great job with this UUV and uh, we, we find there are a lot of applications for this uh, in the underwater domain. Uh, last but not least, uh, what's, uh, what makes it different compared to existing UUVs? Is it its endurance? I think one of the key things about C2 Robotics and how they've worked is the speed at which they've been able to produce this and the cost levels. So one of the things we're trying to work here is rapidly use technology uh, that you can procure um, and, and using cutting edge technology to actually rapidly develop these underwater vehicles. Very well, Commodore, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Good morning, uh, gentlemen. Can you please introduce yourselves? Uh, Robert Dane, CEO of OCS Technology. And Troy Stephen, Vice President of Underwater Systems, TALUS Australia. All right, so what was just uh, signed uh, this morning at uh, Indo-Pacific 2022? Uh, an agreement with OCS and SME to work with TALUS, a prime, to put together an Australian capability that is unique and uh, game-changing. So what is the role of uh, OCS uh, in this uh, program? We're, we're the designers and the builders of the platform or the USV, the unmanned surface vessel which is, uses renewable energy, so solar, wind and wave power to be able to navigate freely in the oceans and deliver the payload, which in this case is the, the sonar array, to whatever location that is required. Which kind of uh, systems does uh, TALES uh, provide? Yeah, so we've, uh, we've been able to utilise the OCS vessel to deploy uh, sonars, uh, actually towed arrays which we use on submarines and frigates. We've been able to uh, miniaturise those so that they can work with uh, Robert's Blue Bottle uh, aut autonomous ships. How is that a game changer for the end user? Well, you know, what this allows us to do now is to put many of these uh, surface vehicles out into the ocean. They can operate together as a swarm. They're very quiet, very agile, and they, they're persistent for many, many days. So that creates an opportunity for us to provide persistent undersea surveillance over large areas of ocean. Is it limited to anti-submarine warfare, or are there other mission sets? Uh, yeah, there's other capabilities. Uh, right now, we have four of these blue bottles operating out of Broome, 180 miles at a place called Rolly Shoals and we're doing border force applications above, above the surface with cameras and radar, looking for foreign fishing vessels and illegal fishermen who are operating in our EEZ. And as, as Troy mentioned, the, the advantage is, is we don't have to put people out there. These things can do it 24 seven and they don't get tired and the worst weather, and it's, it's a disruptively low cost. Cheers, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you.